Wednesday in the first week of Lent. A call to change is never easy, dear brothers and sisters in Christ, and I'm sure we can testify to this because so many things have changed in our lives. The way we were 30 years ago is not the same way we are today. So many things have changed in our lives. I remember a few years ago battling with a pastoral change. It was not easy for me to move from where I was to where I am today. And I know that it's not going to be easy again to leave or to move from where I am today to my next assignment. It's all because a change calls for a change of lifestyle, a change of daily routine. It's a call to move from our comfort zones and face new reality. So many things call for change. It might be the nature of your job, which is calling for a change. It might be the position that we have, which is calling for a change. Maybe it might be the death itself. Some of us have lost people who were so dear to us, so close to us, and life has completely changed. Our lifestyles have changed. Our social life has changed. A change is always a challenge. Today in our readings, we have two groups that are faced with a change of a lifestyle. The people of Nineveh are called for a change, to leave their sinful way of life and turn to God. And they are to do this within a period of 40 days. Lent is also a period of 40 days where we are called by the church to repent. The people of Nineveh were open to this invitation. So they repented and the Lord relented. He did not destroy the city. With the second group, this was not the case. Second group mentioned by Jesus in the gospel closed this possibility for a change. Instead of repenting or changing, they asked for a sign. The Ninevites repented when they heard Jonah's preaching. But the wicked generation mentioned in the gospel by Jesus did not repent even when they heard the preaching of the Son of God. In preaching, Jonah did not perform any sign or miracle, and yet the people of Nineveh believed in the message. Jesus preached. He performed miracles, many signs, and still people did not believe in him. This comparison, dear brothers and sisters, simply tells us two things. One, people with lesser opportunities perform better, while those with abundant blessings get ruined. The audience of Jesus had a greater sign and blessing among them, but they did not realize they did not realize it. And then Jesus said, there is something greater than Solomon here. In your life, perhaps, we, you have received abundant blessings and you have taken them for granted. 
and perhaps your life has been ruined by the abuse of those blessings. There are people out there crying for the same blessings, but they do not have the opportunity. Dear brothers and sisters, we have to understand that every good thing that we have, which others do not have, is a blessing. Never take that for granted. And unless we take it in this way, we will never ever realize that in us, above us, and around us, there is something greater than Solomon in our lives. The second thing from our comparison is this. Whenever the gospel is preached, we always have two groups. The first group is the group like the people of Nineveh in nature. They heard the message, acted upon it, and it changed their lives. The second group is a group that resists change. Just because they don't want to move away from their comfort zones, they always look for excuses. They criticize the message. They find flaws in the message. And they even criticize the preacher. Let us pray that today we may be like the first group. And that's our first step towards change. To be like the people of Nineveh who heard the message, believed in the message, and repented. I know that the change is going to be difficult. A change is always difficult for human beings. And what makes it difficult are the necessary losses involved in any change process. For a marriage to be a success, certain freedoms that a single person enjoys, we have to be given up. So to have a healthy spiritual life, we have to forego some pleasurable things, pleasurable times, especially in this land. And this calls for a change of a lifestyle. Let us remember that to live is to have changed so many times. May God bless you all and may you receive his blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.